In this video, we're going to simplify by writing one term as 2, and we're also going to look at multiplying and factoring as it, it applies to trigonometric expressions, because those are two strategies that are very helpful when you are verifying and solving um, trigonometric identities and equations. So this first one, I want to write tan x plus cotan x over tan x as two terms, giving me tan x over tan x plus cotan x over tan x. You can see that the first fraction here will just cancel, it's equal to 1. So I have 1 plus. Now the cotan x over the tan x, what I'm going to do, I know that tan is 1 over the cotan, so I'm going to write that as cotan x over 1 over cotan x. That will give me 1 plus, so when I m divide by a fraction, that's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So 1 over cotan x would be cotan x over 1. I get 1 plus cotan squared x, and this is a Pythagorean identity 1 plus cotan x equals cosecant squared x, and this is your answer. As I mentioned before, there's more than one way to, to solve or simplify one of these expressions, and so I also left a blank piece of paper, and I'd like to show you how to solve this a different way in case you, you know, just to give you the exposure. The, uh, one of the other strategies was to turn everything into sines and cosines, so we're still going to write this as two terms, but it's the cotan over the tan that we're going to do a little bit differently. So just as before, we wrote it as two terms. The tan x over the tan x is 1. I'm going to rewrite these using sines and cosines. So the numerator is cosine x over sine x. The denominator is sine x over cosine x. I get 1 plus, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal, this is going to give me cosine squared over sine squared, so that's going to be cotan squared, so 1 plus cotan squared is equal to cosecant squared. So you notice that this particular method going to sines and cosines, which is a, is a very nice method, it's commonly used, but in this case it actually took us a lot longer if we go back up here and look at the steps we used. Noticing the reciprocal identity, it actually made it a, an easier problem to do, but you're not always going to find the shortest method the first time. So on a test or a quiz, you're not going to be graded on how long it takes you, you're just going to be, you're going to be graded on your work and that you use the appropriate methods and sometimes you'll try a method and it will get you nowhere, it won't work, and what you have to do is start over. And that's what's a little tricky about these, you really have to be uh, determined and you have to stick to it. You don't want to give up right away. So let's look at, uh, let's have you do practice problem six. Uh, again, if you run, if there's not a lot of room here for you, you can use the blank uh, piece of paper that I've inserted. So writing it as two terms, I get cosecant x over cosecant x minus sine x over cosecant. Again, this cancels, so I'm going to get 1 minus, and I'm going to do a similar step as I did in example 6. I'm going to rewrite the cosecant as its reciprocal, which is 1 over sine x. So this is going to be 1 minus sine x times the reciprocal of 1 over sine x, which is sine x. This gives me 1 minus sine squared x, and as we have seen before, and you can confirm it by writing that Pythagorean identity up again to help you, we've got the sine squared x plus cosine squared x equals 1, and so 1 minus sine squared x is going to be cosine squared x. And there's your answer. Okay, the last four problems in this video deal with multiplying and factoring. And this is a strategy that's helpful in simplifying trigonometric expressions and also 
verifying identities and solving equations, which will be coming up later in this unit. The first one, I just want to use the distributive property. So I start by multiplying the sine squared times 1 and the sine squared times the cosine squared. This gives me sine squared x plus sine squared x cotan squared x. The next step I would rewrite in terms of sine and cosine to see if we can simplify. Rewriting cotan as cosine squared over sine squared, we can cancel the sines and we get sine squared plus cosine squared and that's just going to equal 1, right? Sine squared plus cosine squared is equal to 1. Right, let's look at a factoring problem and then I'll have you do the two practice problems that go along with these. When factoring, it might be helpful to just look at some particular forms and using variables instead of trig functions to start with. If you have a squared minus b squared, that's the difference of two squares. It's a plus b times a minus b when factored. And so if a is cosine and b is sine, to factor this, you're going to get cosine x plus sine x and cosine x minus sine x. At this point, I'd like you to pause the video, try practice problem 7 and practice problem 8, and then start the video to check your work. Let's distribute the 1 plus cosine x times 1 minus cosine x, or multiply this out, and you can do it out the long way, or you can take a shortcut. If I just FOIL it, I'm going to get the first, which is 1, then the outer, which is minus cosine x, and then multiply the inner, which would be plus cosine x, and then multiply the last, which would be minus cosine squared x. The inside terms cancel, and you get 1, minus cosine squared x. Now you could have just used the same idea that a plus b times a minus b equals a squared minus b squared. Alright, let's look at the last one. Let's look at this practice problem 8. We've got the difference of two squares. So your a is secant and your b is cosecant. So we'll have secant x plus cosecant x times secant x minus cosecant x. Okay, we'll pick up the last factoring in the next video.